Yo, what's up? So, if you're watching this, that probably means that you've already watched part one of the tutorial on uh, creating a stylized character from start to finish. If you haven't watched that yet, highly recommend you do so because that's going to get you up until this point and we're going to keep moving right away. So, let's just jump right in. So, we left off right here with a partial torso, completed head. So, I'm just going to jump into edit mode and I'm going to keep working. So, we left off here um, with the edge selection mode, either up here or you can hit the two on the, the numbers on the top, not the numpads. Um, just go into edge selection mode and that's looking good. I'm, actually, I'm gonna give it another extension now because this is the bottom of the torso, but I'm gonna extrude out once more and on the Z axis and here we're working on more of the waist section, the, the bottom. And I'm gonna, just gonna start pushing these together. So I'll grab this back one and this front one and we'll create a face there. And if I grab this middle one, simply by just clicking one edge, if you hit F, you can fill in the face all the way over. Now, I'm going to, since this one's now selected, I'm going to grab this one on the left side, turn off proportional editor, and just scale these guys in a little bit. Because I want to I wanna get them a little closer together, start working it towards some legs here. Okay, with edge selection, I will select this loop and this loop. And I'm going to try and get them a little more round so I'm just going to scale them on these different axes here cool and I will just extrude straight down just E Z now I'm going to come in the front view here and just keep extruding down and we're going to actually change all these proportions here later once we added an armature but this is just to get us in the right place right now since we have these bottom two selected I think it's a good time to go in here in individual origins before we add more uh, vertices in you can just actually scale these down a little bit just to like get the legs tapering in a decent way before we add more vertices and it starts to get a little more unorderly so grab the knee section and put it more towards the center and we can actually scale this down just almost like a halfway point you really don't want these you see how these lines can start getting bowed or or under under bowed i guess just try to find a nice happy medium spot that's not it's not doing anyone too much harm. Nice. All right. So we got these selected here. Um, one thing I want to say is let's just throw in edge loops on each side of it on both legs. So just so we have a little more geometry to work with, I will holding Alt and then selecting both of these here again. I'm just going to do Control B and give these a little bevel out, and then I'm going to give them a bevel of about two like that just so we have more, again, more to work with whenever we're actually bending this geometry with the armature then. So let's take a look at the side view. And then this is looking a little too tubular, so let's just give it some shape. So if I turn on Proportional Editor, I can go into the side, I can go into the side view here and then Wireframe View. With Face Selection, I can just sort of hover over these and just start pushing things around. And maybe you don't want that turned on, but um, just keep a note, I'm not going overboard with this, and also, because we have wire, wireframe selected and I'm in the side view, I'm working with both of these at the same time, so just keep your eye out for that. Make sure you're actually, you're actually selecting the back side because you want these symmetrical. One thing that helps characters I find a lot is grab the belly section and just pull it this way. It gives the, gives the, the butt section like a more of a curvature, and then, um, it, gives the belly an, a nicer like rounded a more natural feel there and then this is a good place to start just moving points into position and just you you, you sort of want to have this like this torso shape I mean, my characters I give the torso shape obviously it goes down but it just sort of starts to curve back a little bit all right that's looking good for me so far so let's just keep on moving so let's see how our characters looking all right <laughs> All right, calm down, everyone. It's okay. We'll put some clothes on in a minute. So, we'll go into side view here again. Let's start working with the feet here. So the feet. Now this is again, this is a stylized character, and we're, you're going to see the same thing I'm going to do with the hands. Similarly, you can decide how in detailed do you want to go. Like just like with the face, um, you know, our nose is just a like a round sphere, essentially, right? Um, so do you want to put five fingers in your character or do you want to have them just have maybe have like 
two or three, or you know, like three or four fingers, or um, you know, likewise with the feet. You see how I like to do this is I extrude down this very bottom portion here, and then I will actually, oops, I will over here with this little box selection tool selected, just grab these front ones, and I like to pull them out like this. Cool. And then I extrude it down again. And then I select these front four, and then you can extrude them out this way. And now you're starting to get a little bit of a foot shape. And then I just fill in this back heel here. Fill, fill. All right, we're starting to get some work. It needs work, we're gonna work on it. So, vertex selection. We'll just highlight this, bring it down a little bit. Um, I like to bring this, this guy back here just because it gives it a heel and you, you need a heel. And I just slide things into, into foot position, making things look a little more, have a little more depth. And I find that um, one loop cut vertically on each side um, gives more geometry and helps, it just helps it out a little bit. And then you can even like add that uh, loop cut in and then just bring it a little closer to the ground because these these will double as like, you know, slip slide on shoes, just something, something easy. They don't require too much detail or effort. Um, but if you want to go into more detail modeling a shoe, you certainly can. But I, I like to leave them like this because I just, I find it gets the job done and it, I think it looks good. So we're getting into the clothes section and here is how we will do the clothes. So, so I like to make the clothing just part of my character. So there's some really easy ways to do that. Um, one way, so I like to start right where the shirt meets the torso. Um, I will add another loop cut right here, right in the middle, and then I bring it the whole way down until, the, until we hit the bottom like that. And then I will just give it a little scale out, nothing crazy, just a little bit of a puff there. And then you can add in another loop cut below it. And then as you can see, it sort of makes that pin look. And again, this is, we're getting this because we have this subdivision uh, look turned up a little bit. And basically, these three vertices are kind of in the same spot, but this subdivision thing is pulling them apart, so you can see. So it's helping us get this little pinned look. And if we just scale that in and sort of pull it up, tuck it under these vertices, you can just play around by moving around. So I'll grab this this one, and I'll pull it down a little bit, scale it out. You get You start to get this, like a shirt that looks like a sort of looping over top of it. Now, um, you can actually do the same thing, but in reverse. So I'll, I'll go back a little bit. So say you don't want your shirt hanging down, but say your character's shirt is actually tucked in. Well, you can do the same thing. Just add another, add another thing there. You can actually grab this one below it, scale this one out, and bring it up a little bit. Grab the next one in, scale it in like that. Scale this one in, and just keep working this one up. Uh, to make it look like the shirt's tucked into the pants and then maybe just pull that up a little bit just to make sure we're not having pants too low but there you can have uh, some pants tucked in and it actually looks looks like they're tucked in rather than having the shirt hanging over I think I'm gonna go with that look for this character is having the the pants tucked now this is looking a little crazy so maybe I made that back arch too much but I'll bring that back so again, he's still all skin material, but maybe he's like wearing some, some skin clothing. That's some, something on like the dark web or something I think people are into doing. Maybe this guy surfs the dark web, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Now let's talk about pants. So does your character want uh, full pants or just shorts? Well, you can do whatever you like. This is your character. I'm going to make shorts, but the same thing applies down here. So basically you're going to want to find a nice place for your for your shorts to end actually I already have a nice uh, seam right here so we'll do the same thing um, we can just grab both those seams control B bevel this out and just make sure you have three little points there and you know you scroll up or down on the mouse to get more but I'll leave it right about there and you can grab the top one on both and I can again with individual origin selected just scale them on out and then pull them down Grab these guys, pull them up, and scale them in. Really, you're just looking for that pinch, and that pinch is going to help sell 
the fact that we have different layers here. And you're gonna sell this even better once you add a, a, clo a clothing material. So I just like to go and add temporary materials. So add a new one, new, we can just call this pants. And then go into edit mode, I'll go to the front view. And then you can just start selecting edge loops here. Um, just select all the ones that belong to the pants and assign them over here to the pants. And just make sure again that they are selected. So let's just do a basic, basic material just to get us going. They're looking a little plain right now. So we will go into our shader editor, object mode. With pants selected, I will just turn up the roughness, turn down the specular, add a sheen of like two. And then maybe like... Let's do some, like, I don't know, salmon pants. So once once it comes time to do the shirt, we're going to do the same method. Um, but let's actually add some arms in here. So we will go to our character, tab and edit mode. And again, we'll look from the side view. And then I like to grab this, ver this section of vertices right here, sort of right in line with coming down the side, um, and then just a little bit back. So these four, if you're in wireframe view, if you have face selection turned on, uh, you can just select them right through the mesh and then you're sure that you've selected each side properly. Extrude these out with E. And then since they're gonna go all crazy directions, I'll just hit escape. I will just scale these along the x-axis. Go back to individual origins, scale them along the x-axis again, because now we wanna affect them individually and just flatten them out to zero. So now we're just starting to pull out some arms a little bit. Um, we will extrude these guys out. Extrude on the x-axis. Cool, extrude again. So the arm's really blocky, we're gonna fix that. So since they're so blocky, uh, an easy thing to do is just make sure wireframe selection, and then make sure you have the box selection grabbed. And then everything that is considered arms, just highlight that. And then over here in your tools panel, in edit mode, select this little subdivided cube look thing. That's the smoothing modifier. And then we can just grab this little handle and pull it down. And it will just smooth everything out nicely. And it'll start to round everything off kind of nicely. And for some things, it works really well. For others, it doesn't so much. So it's just finding that happy, that happy balance, happy medium. So I'm going to grab this ring of vertices and this ring of vertices. And with median point selected again, I'll just scale these back more into the armpits. Just so we're starting to like see that crease a little bit. And that's going to help us out a lot. It's going to help us out with our deformations. It's going to just look a lot nicer. So yeah, pull that guy back. And we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's, let's make a hand now. Let's just grab one side here. Duplicate it. And then... I will hit P, which is the separate tool, and I will separate it by selection. So when I go out of object mode, we actually have a whole new object here, and this is going to be the hand. So because the hand is still has the origin point from the body, we can actually add in a mirror modifier, and now whatever we do to one side will happen to the other perfectly. So let's focus on making a hand here. So I will grab all of these vertices and just extrude them out a little bit. And maybe add another edge loop right in here. Cool. All right, so really this is just a game of working with what you got, making a hand look good. So the most important things to keep in mind is generally the fingers are gonna go this direction and the thumb is gonna go kind of this direction, probably, uh, probably a little more like this direction. But for a character that's super simplified like this, um, going right out this direction is probably probably your best bet. I like to make these, each face here will be a finger on the top. So because we have two, we'll need to add in two more edge loops. One, two. And then on the right side, or on the front view, go back to the wire, uh, go back to the wireframe view with vertices selection, and then just scale these guys on the x-axis. We want this flat, so scale it to zero. And then we can actually grab each, each one of these guys. One, two, three, four. And we want to extrude these out. 
as fingers, but we want to do it individually. So instead of hitting E to extrude as like a whole, we're just going to do Alt E and select extrude individual faces, which is going to pull them all out the same length. Now, whatever place you stop is good. So stop about that length and you can leave them all the same length, but if you want to make it more like fingers, um, just look at your fingers and see which ones are the same length. Generally, you unselect the pinky, move those three fingers out a little more, and then just select this middle finger here and move that one out a little more too. So you get this like ring, this little roundedness. Add another edge loop around each finger like that. Um, I like to grab all the edge loops here and then bevel them out again with just one just to give it that like just to give it sort of, you know, three parts like a finger would have. Looking good. They're looking a little tall, so I'll go back into this front view here and I will just scale them on the z-axis. And again, this is a separate object, so you can sort of just move it around, move things into position, make things look better than they are. You know, is it looking too smushed? You gotta, you gotta scale it out a little bit. That's looking better, right? Maybe we'll scale the whole thing down. There's no right answers, but you know, this is how I do it. And depending on what kind of mood I'm in, sometimes I'll even give this corner a little bevel, which is where I will then scale this out from, right? So I bevel it first, so it has everything coming out of this like 45 look. And then if I grab this front view thing here, because like if you look at your thumb, there's like a little like wedge portion coming out that like kind of need to create that. So we got that there. I will then extrude this bit out, scale it down, bring it around, grab these guys here, pull them in. Starting to get that look, Start, it needs some work here for sure. Now we don't want this to be like ridiculous, but nice, alright, I'm liking the way that's looking. I just like to give it a little rotate. Sometimes if you just grab two, uh, two of these and just hit RR twice, you can just sort of move them around in a nice, a nice way. So another thing to make sure you capture with the hand, and again, just look at your hand, see what, see what's going on. Right where the thumb connects, you have a little bit of a bulge right here. So you kind of want to like make sure you retain that because that's a critical piece of the thumb, the look of the thumb. I'll add another little loop there. Scale this down. Okay, that's coming together. I think it's overall a little thick height-wise, so I'm just gonna grab everything, actually just the top bit, and bring it down. Bring it down, yeah. If you start, you know, keep in mind about how uh, the whole mesh looks like it's like going this direction. You wanna adjust for that. You can actually do that with uh, the skew tool here, this guy, if you select this, and then you can just sort of start pulling it back this way. The skew tool is pretty cool for situations like where you just want to like move everything in one direction. And sometimes if, you, again, like we're looking maybe a little blocky, this tool is great, this smooth tool. Just click on it and just give it a little, just a little something just to take off, just to take off the edge, man. You know what I mean? Literally, quite literally, just to take off the edge. Okay. Let's go to the top. I will select these ones, give it a little rotation. Hands have rotations, you know? It's not all blocky, it's not all blocky. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. We have, we're gonna connect the hand now. So I have these three vertices are all we need um, to delete. We'll just grab those, so just delete those, delete vertices. And then I'm gonna grab this guy here and connect that in, just so we have this perfect ring here. And we're looking good. All right, so it's time to connect them up. So I will grab this guy the actual body, edit mode, and then we can delete that front mesh here, that front vertice. Let's go ahead and delete that. Remember, we don't have a mirror modifier selected on this character, but like we do on the hand, so we have to do everything twice. So I'll delete that on the left side too. And it's a good time to look at um, how the arms compare to the hands now that you made them. So they're clearly bigger. So we just gotta fix that up a little bit. So I'll scale those down. And also make sure you sort of scale down on the z-axis too, because they're not perfectly cylindrical anymore. Scale everything on the axes. 
we have this uh, little loop cut that's essentially representing the the forearm here, not the actual elbow. We'll deal with the elbow here in a minute, but let's get these connected up first. So, got this guy. We can actually just like, go ahead and apply the mirror modifier. It's gonna, gonna give us this warning. Apply modifier was not first. Um, that just means, hey, it wasn't the first one on the stack. Uh, so subdivision comes first. In this case, it didn't affect anything, but there are times when if you apply a modifier uh, after, it's gonna look different because this happened, the subdivision happened first, then the modifier happened. So just keep that in mind. Uh, order matters over here in this stack. The selection of these is only gonna matter if you have different modifiers, which is why we applied the mirror modifier to begin with. So it doesn't exactly really matter, so just, I like to always though grab the hand first and then whatever whatever you're adding in grab the body second because the body is the active object which means all of the modifiers are going to be applied from the body so control J I'm going to join those two together so now if we go into edit mode we have one object and we can just select both of those edges and then under edge at bridge edge loops and we're gonna get a nice little wrist attachment. Wrist attachment, <laughs> like it's Call of Duty. If I unlock the wrist attachment, bridge those edge loops. All right, I'm surprised we didn't have any normal issues. Usually, you might actually have some like pulling happening because you're gonna have like conflicting normals. Um, but just to be sure we don't, again, anytime that you join things or you mesh, mesh meshes together, might be good just to go into edit mode, select everything, give it a nice shift N to recalculate those normals on the outside. Perfect, all right. So we got our character here. One thing to keep in mind is he's actually huge. So he's seven and a half meters tall. Generally speaking, um, humans are like 1.8, is that it? I like to just shoot for two meters tall. And a meter is one of these cubes, by the way. So this is one meter. So it's uh, just a good way to go about this is say, hey, humans should just be these two tall. So I'll just grab everything here, and I like to just make sure we're, we're moving from the 3D cursor. So right there in the middle, and just bring everything up, scale it down. If you actually just, because you can put the, because you, if you're scaling from the 3D cursor, if you just do Shift S, you can do cursor to world origin. If you have a bunch of stuff selected, you can just put it right where you want it to stand here and then just scale this guy down to world origin and then it should all work. So now our character is actually the proper height, which is important because if he's not the proper height, um, your materials might look differently. For example, the skin, uh, the subsurface scattering uh, will actually act differently on larger objects because it actually has like a certain depth that's gonna go and that depth is actually being applied to the size of the model. Um, and again, make sure we just normalize all our scales and everything that we brought it down. So give it a control A, apply the scale. Same thing for the eyes, control A, apply the scale. And same thing for the ears. Remember, they're all separate objects. All right, alrighty then. We got our character coming along just fine. I'm gonna turn up our little world shading. Yeah. Sweet, I don't know why that was so low. So let's add a shirt on our character. So just like we did for the pants, we already have a nice seam to work with down here. So I guess the first step would be to um, add elbows. So you're gonna, just gonna add an elbow. So control R, right where an elbow would be generally. Control R, another elbow. And then you're just gonna wanna look and see how are they looking. I actually think the arms might be kind of long right now if I'm being entirely honest. So I will grab these two here and just scale them in on the x-axis just a little bit and also remember now that they're scaled in on the x-axis they're all stubby you made them all stubby so switch back to individual origins and scale them back out a little bit just to nor try to nor normalize what you just did there i'll grab the middle ones there scale those guys down all right now it is time to add in it might be good to add in just like we did below add in a, an edge loop right where the bicep is going to be on each side all right, and then we can grab this elbow edge loop here on each side. Again, that's alt, left click on each one and holding shift, you can select multiple loops. Let's just give it another bevel with control B and bring it up to about two. Just make sure you have another one in the middle. 
just because we don't want to have any issues with bending. Okay, so let's add in a shirt. So just like we did with the pants, um, we're going to decide, hey, where's the shirt going to go? Well, we already have uh, shorts, so we should probably have a t-shirt. So I will grab the edge of where the t-shirt should go on each side, and then give that a little bevel. And then just remember to scale up that first one there, because this is what's going to give it that puff. So you're going to scale that up with the individual origin selected. And that's already getting a nice puff there for that. And then you're going to want to grab each of these ones on the edge here. Oops. Each of those edge ones of, of the three. And then with median point selected, just scale it in a little bit. And there, we're looking nice. Um, one thing is we have a we have no neckline, so essentially we have a, an optical illusion, or what I, what I like to call a neck shirt, which is continuation of neck to shirt. It's like where does shirt start, neck end scenario. We have to actually fix this up. So jump into edit mode here, and we have to fix our little neck shirt scenario. I will just add one in right in between, and sort of scale it in, and then you can just do what we did before. Give it a bevel, and then find we can find the one on the towards the skin and just bring it down a little bit just to sort of create again we're looking for that crease that crease is important it's going to help us define visual separation of the shirt and the body and then to top it off we're going to use the material to sort of hide the fact that hey this is all one mesh and actually what we can do here is we can add another material and we can select the pants and because we want it to be the same cloth thing we've already built, you can just click this three here. And now we have pants 001, which we can rename shirt. And now it's essentially, we have all the same settings we use for pants, except we can just change them now. So I want a black shirt. And then once we apply this thing, so you might be thinking, hey, how do I select just the shirt? It's kind of complex. Do I have to individually select all these faces? Um, what I like to do is I like to find where is the shirt not, right? And then we hide those vertices and then we can use our select linked tool. So here's how we do it. Just like we did with everything before, holding alt, you can select a ring. So I'll select that one, which is clearly part of the arm. I'll select the portion that is clearly part of the head or the neck with shift. Remember, you got to make sure you have both of them selected. And then another portion that's clearly part of the other arm. And then let's grab this last portion down here. That's clearly part of the pants this one here and then if I just hit H to hide all those we have a perfectly separated cutout of the shirt and if I use L to select I selected just the shirt and I can assign that shirt material to that and alt H brings everything back and we've easily identified what's the shirt and what's not and made that a material all right our character body is is done and created and now it's time to rig it up.